Hello everybody, welcome to the Property Factory's July 2024 webinar. Dan, Vinny, hello, Hank. lovely to have you both here. It's wonderful to see so many familiar names uh, and faces on the webinar tonight. It's also wonderful to see so many new names uh, and faces. Obviously, we do these webinars every single month at the Property Factory. And so the larger we can grow this audience, the more it motivates us to produce some great content and ultimately provide as much value as possible, really. So for those of you that haven't been here before, as I said, we run these webinars every single month. And every month we cover a different topic. So in previous months, we've covered topics like how to pick the right investment property, how to run the numbers mm -hmm. on your investment property. And we've also delved into areas like how to choose the right developer when it comes to purchasing a new build property. Hence why we've got Vinny from Brooksfield on the webinar tonight. Uh, obviously we think really highly of Brooksfield. Brooksfield is a Christchurch based property developer. You specialize predominantly in townhouse market, but also build some standalone stuff too. Yeah. So thanks for coming along Vinny. Wonderful no, good to, be to have here. you here. And I've also got Dan, my wonderful colleague and the sales manager here at the Property Factory. Now, for those of you that have dealt with the Property Factory in the past, you may have dealt with Dan or had the pleasure of dealing with Dan. As I said, he is the sales manager. Um, not as only is he really good at getting the most out of our team, <laughs> but he's also really good at guiding first home buyers and investors through the purchasing process and essentially choosing, helping them choose the right property for them and their financial circumstances. So yeah, it is really good to have you both here. I think it's gonna be a really good webinar. We're gonna discuss all things property, property investment, property development, uh, and Vinny, I guess, sort of learn a little bit about you, yep. uh, pick your brains and your philosophy on property investment and, and property development. But yep. we're obviously here to talk about property though. Um, there's been a few positive changes, I think, in the property market over the last couple of weeks. Obviously inflation seems to be getting close to being in to sort of one to 3% bandwidth. I think the June figures were 3.3%, down significantly from the March figures and under what the Reserve Bank was expecting. I think that's only going to be good for interest rates going forward and hopefully property prices. So if you're looking to buy property, in my opinion, and I'm sure you would both agree now is the perfect time. I think there's certainly opportunity in the off the plan space too, mm -hmm. to really make sound investment decisions. Um, but yeah, wonderful to have you here. Yeah. And wonderful to have you all along. Dan, do you want to kick things off? Talk a little bit about the property factory, what we do and how we collaborate with companies like Brooksfield to help investors find the right properties for them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the warm welcome for this, my first webinar, but no doubt you'll see me again in the near future. Um, uh, look, a lot of you will know what we do at the Property Factory already, but I'll give you a quick rundown on it. Um, we work with about 50 different developers across New Zealand. We've got one of the largest off the plan stock list. Um, uh, and what, I'm, what we do primarily is guide investors into a good investment property, whether it's to do with yield or whether it's to do with capital gains. Um, of the thousands of listings that we have a pool to look at, we're selecting the very best opportunities to take that hard work out of and the homework away from what you might have to do as investors. Now, primarily we're working with investors, but we do work with um, first home buyers as well. So there's a little bit of an overview about what we do at the Property Factory. Mm -hmm. Now look, Alex does a lot of talking and often he doesn't get much praise, but Alex is the one that builds these relationships with developers. Um, and obviously that's what helps us tick here and helps you guys find the very best opportunities. So super excited to have Vinny along here as one of those developers who we truly appreciate um, who, who generate some excellent stock here in Christchurch. And moreover, just to ex explore and understand your, your journey Vinny, yeah, sure. uh, how it all started, yeah. Yeah. how long have you been building for them? We'll have a whole bunch of questions for as we go. <laughs> and we're looking forward to your questions at the end as well today. Yeah. So um, do you want to take care of some housekeeping and then we'll jump in? Just on the questions thing, I'm sure everybody will have questions for Vinny throughout the webinar. Please do fire them through, but we'll endeavor to ask them at the end. Cool. That way we yep. can keep you rolling. Uh -huh. oh, the questions goodness. at the end. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Vinny, you're on the hot seat, mate. Hot seat, mate. So. Yeah. I guess we just want to learn what makes you tick. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, do you, uh, I'm do you want me to start with like how we began and to like what we do? Now? Yeah. Is do you know what? Can we kick off with? I want to know if if this was a dream of yours right from the beginning. Were you a kid running around saying, "I want to build houses," or did this kind of happen? 
Oh, well, yeah, if we're going to go back that far, it's going to be... A, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think um, when I was a kid, like, I, um, I've i always loved, like, building. B- building, um, like, as a kid, I grew up building huts and tree houses and cabins and stuff with my granddad and my brothers. And um, yeah, when I... So, yeah, that's kind of my childhood, like, spent all my time doing that and grew up in the North Island um, on some different farms and stuff. So, mm-hmm. like, had plenty of playground to do that. And... But when I, I left school when I was 15 um, to do a building apprenticeship um, because it was just like sort of the most natural thing and they didn't really like me very much at school. Um, Were you based here in Christchurch at the time? <laughs> no, that was, in, that was in Tauranga. Okay. okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and ever since then, I've been like involved in property and been investing in property since I was about 18, 19. Wow. Um, so... Yeah, um, but we, when I finished my building apprenticeship, I actually was a real estate agent after that, um, selling, interestingly, new build houses. So mm-hmm. got like a really good understanding of, um, you know, off-plan sales and all of that, all mm-hmm. of that sort of thing. Um, and then probably the biggest sort of next thing I did would, would have been um, earthquake damaged houses. So we, Ollie, my business partner who owns half of Brooksfield with me, um, we used to buy like, you know, uh, earthquake damage written off houses and and um, renovate them and sell them, which is effectively a small development. You yes. know, you've, your development when you sort of boil it down is improving land, mm-hmm. and we do that now by building. You know, where there was once say one eight hundred thousand dollar house on it, we might improve it by building ten six hundred thousand yeah. dollar houses on it or something. Yeah. So. Um, you know, earthquake damaged houses and buildings is effectively just like a small scale of that. You'd buy a house and and um, fix it and sell it and and hopefully make a small profit and move on to the next one. And and uh, that's kind of how we ended up getting into the development. I guess actually we bought a piece of land in um, Richmond in Christchurch and we actually tried to sell it to another developer um, and. If we tried to sell it to quite a few developers and no one wanted it so we're like we should actually we should do this so um so we did yeah mm. and that was a f- our first development in like 2019 um so yeah and it's been kind of a been yeah pretty good since then i suppose i mean we've done built quite a lot of houses in christchurch i mean it hasn't been all good but yeah you know <laughs> so look what i'm really excited about is i don't actually know a lot about you or <clears throat> i know brookfield products but yeah. i don't know about your journey and how you got there but i did notice that when you started out you weren't building these heritage colonial style homes yeah so where did you start well, what we, did they look like yeah 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 um yeah so so we um started out we, we were like with, with the site and, and then we actually bought some subsequent sites and we were sort of um, maybe doing you know maybe five ten houses at a time and we probably did about 50 of those sort of first houses we did actually i can see a photo of them on the slide there <laughs> and um have you always pretty, done the models we actually have always done the models in fact if you can see me and alex you can, might be able to see one behind here yeah, our new ones but um yeah we we do make most of our houses well yeah we try to but the yeah. model maker can't probably can't quite keep up with them all but we like to make them just because it gives you a real sense of like space and i just personally really like them um so yeah we we were doing that and but basically the reason that our houses look like that and probably the reason that a lot of houses look like that in new zealand now because like you kind of do look at houses and i think most humans who aren't involved in construction who don't understand the realities of what we sort of do probably look at old houses like villas and bungalows and think sweet cute you know they come with their issues like being cold and that sort of thing but nothing that can't be fixed and then they look at new houses and a lot of people's reactions and i know a lot of people i talk to the reaction is like how did it get so ugly and <laughs> it's because it <clears throat> partly it's because um a huge proportion of houses now are built by developers not des- design your own home um you know I suppose, you know, where you buy a piece of land and get an architect and build your own house, where you have sort of, in a way, full control over um, uh, what what the design looks like. So you're kind of at the mercy, basically, of draftspeople or architects to design your homes and engineers, and they're basically at the mercy of um, modernist 
um, drafting skills and architecture skills and they don't teach the principles of like classical architecture anymore mm -hmm. like they used to and that's yeah. why that's why it's sort of there's such a disconnect between new houses and old houses and and another reason is is that old houses were drawn by hand by architects like skilled ar very skilled architects and draftsmen mm -hmm. whereas now most houses you see are built using elements out of architectural software and the architectural software aren't built by people who really care about beauty. Yep. Okay. So that's kind of why. And yeah. basically I realised that. But how it all came about, sorry. How, it all, <laughs> how that all came about was um, I was actually looking for a house for myself to, to buy and I wanted a colonial um, Georgian revival home, which is a popular house in Christchurch from like 1920s and 30s. People in Christchurch will know possibly no names like Heathcote Howmore and Cecil Wood designed, you know, your typical mm -hmm. American houses, clapboard or weatherboard, you know, symmetrical windows and cute little roof, little like Massachusetts, mm -hmm. cute Christmas town vibe. Yeah. Um, and that's what I wanted to buy. And like, as I was looking at them, I started to realize that they're actually pretty basic. They're basically a box, they're, they're a box, a lot of them, mm -hmm. with symmetrical windows place in the right place and nice little door surround and I was like I could easily do one of our developments that looks like this I just have to make sure that there's nothing in the way of the windows and so we did that and that was one actually on um, Hendon Street in Sydenham in Christchurch and basically from there like they became super popular sort of resonated with a lot of people who like that style but needed a new home for various reasons yep. um sorry so there wasn't like there was an aha moment in that hey this is missing from the marketplace and this is i want what i want but at that point you weren't hey we're going to transform our business we're going to start developing heritage colonial looking homes it's it kind of it kind was of evolved and measure. it did evolve okay. i mean like everything yeah. eh? like yeah. you, you when, when you look at it when, you, when you're looking from the outside in, you think that anyone who's sort of ever done anything, it looks like one day they weren't doing it, the next day they were. Yeah. But you know, actually what it was is we, for a long time, actually did the, the modern houses and the old looking, oh, you know, the classical houses yeah. at the same time. But then slowly over time, two things happened. A lot of people started knowing us for the, for the classical styles. Um, and, uh, and also I got, because that's sort of my part of the business as product, um, I got a lot more passionate about it, and I really wanted to like change how the direction Christchurch was going. Um, and there's like a big movement all over the world now. Yeah. Like before the war, sorry, keep oh. going. <laughs> the, but before the war, there was basically everyone was trained classically, so everyone designed. Keep, keep, keep yeah, yeah, keep the keep looking at the watch and just yeah, just speed me along if you need to, but. Um, Everyone was trained in classical architecture and they did various different styles, like all over the world, different styles. After the war, everyone was trained in essentially modernist principles. And the issue with modernism actually is, has really good, it's actually a really good guideline to design buildings. Yeah. The issue is, is that only few people get it and do it well. Mm -hmm. and, and we have some really good examples in Christchurch of that, um, especially historically, not a major thing now. but. Um, about 20 years ago there would have only been about two classical architects in the world training um, Francis Terry and another couple in America now there'd be up to thousands well so oh, it's really? it is becoming a big movement like okay. you know obviously the algorithms know me so they promote all their stuff to me on the platforms but mm -hmm. yeah. like you just see it everywhere all over the world especially in Europe and America hasn't really come to Australia and New Zealand yet but yep. you know it's based on the principles of humanism and like most un uneducated architecturally humans who are sort of the best judge of architecture ironically mm -hmm. really like it mm -hmm. um, so sorry your question I, I I'll, I'll your take question. you to a different yeah, question <laughs> so look uh, we're different. looking at the images oh, yeah, on the yeah, screen yeah, right yeah. now yeah. and these are some beautiful <laughs> examples of, of the homes that you build and yeah. look someone might look at this and say it's not even a new build by just aesthetics alone but what's nice is that of course you've blended all the convenience of a new home so they're going to keep you dry and warm and it's not going to be drafty but they've got some charm and character to them 
I love that being an Englishman. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> there's going to be a contingence of people that don't get this look. Yeah. But you've decided to, to make this your niche, and obviously it's going really well for you. Yeah. Uh, how do you address the people that don't particularly like look, or does it not bother you? You've got um, enough of the market anyway. Well, you know, I partly want to get them to get their head read. But apart from that, <laughs> the, the, do you know the key thing is, um, the, the folks here can see the pictures that I can see here, can't they? Yeah. yeah. So, so, the, so the top left house, very un-New Zealand. Yep. And most key people who have been to England, especially London, um, see that and possibly like yourself and it like clicks and you're like oh my god yes sweet i can have a little bit of slice of home here but most new zealanders really don't understand that style of architecture uh, not understand but don't like it because it's not what they're used to and that's generally what we like is what we're used to <clears throat> yeah fair enough we have found that <clears throat> with our um, more new zealand buyers who have like grown up in new zealand and spent a lot of their time in new zealand predominantly like and this is what we sort of do most of is the timber weatherboard verandas nice big eaves mm -hmm. probably more like what you can see on the bottom really except interestingly the bottom two developments were effectively they're the same development except one has a veranda on the front and one doesn't and it's yeah. actually interesting to see how different you can make houses look yeah, just by adding a few things but um that's actually our older style um, when I first started it because a bit I didn't sort of mention before when I was telling you all that big story was that through the process I did realise that it wasn't just as simple as putting symmetrical windows on a house. Mm -hmm. There was a lot to do with stud heights and that's why you know all of our studs are higher in our house and window sizes and room proportion, correct classical detailing mm -hmm. and all of that sort of stuff. So probably our houses actually like one of our most recent developments is the top right one that's all architecturally correct in terms of window sizes um, door surrounds you've even got the chimneys on there the little dormers and stuff but again that's not totally New Zealand that's more of an American style um, but yeah so our newer ones definitely are more we have found that people definitely like the New Zealand style and what that is is timber with this effectively villa style right gotcha yeah okay yeah nice and what is what's your philosophy around property investment obviously sort of yield based selling is quite prolific in the current yeah. market i mean when yeah. interest rates are high um yeah. it can cost investors a fair bit of money to own a property and so what we're finding at the property factory for example is that investors are looking for high yielding properties just to minimize that cost to own yeah yeah what's your philosophy around that um well like i i've as i was saying like invested in property for since i was quite young and um like i bought my first well this is a good example i bought my first house in um yeah. tauranga in the north island mm. and it was a terrible wee 1970s james hardy clapboard mm. uninsulated thing that wasn't it was cross lease which apparently you know you don't want to buy a cross lease property but it was like at the time 300 grand and i know people are going to be thinking that's like so cheap but <laughs> but actually 300 grand at the time at was the time. pretty crazy yeah. because i was making it then i think i was making around um 25 dollars a year as a building apprentice so like i don't know what a building apprentice makes now but like it, it was actually equivalent pretty pretty on par with what you see today mm -hmm. yep. um, and interest rate I think the interest rates were like five and a half six percent mm -hmm. from memory but that house is pretty awful right kind of had a lot of things about it that you didn't really you wouldn't really recommend what it was made out of the fact that it was on a hill it was like on piles way up on the hill you know you can you know mm -hmm. but do you know the thing at the end of the day is that I sold it about seven or eight years later to actually to do something else and um th it had gone up in value like just the average for tauranga it was like four five percent per year yeah. there was actually a time i tried to sell it two years after i bought it and i got offers for less than i paid mm. and i was like oh i just can't do that so i held on to it but my philosophy really is that you need to buy the best property you can afford to buy so you need to be buying the best property in the best street you can possibly afford 
part of that whole thing is that you need to be able to afford to hold on to it. Yep. Um, so like, I suppose in a sense, the best property you could buy would probably be vacant central city land in Auckland or Christchurch. Like, if you look at historical capital gains, that's where it happens, is in, is in central city areas. Mm -hmm. The issue with that is servicing a central city vacant piece of land would that's be quite tough. difficult. Correct. So you kind of need to find somewhere between vacant central city land <laughs> and terrible dingy apartment in a really bad area with a high yield effectively it's about finding somewhere in between <clears throat> as close to the central city land as you yeah. can afford to do because if you if you're looking at doing it in your your situation is you're either going to be able to do nothing yeah. or buy a pretty awful house you're probably better to buy the pretty awful house but it's just a case of buying that's always been my principle is good property and good streets yep. basically we see yeah location as well yeah. is like the biggest thing and it's what the boomers that's what they all all did mm. and we're all sitting around going like boomers 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 mm. but you know they it's because <laughs> it's basically because they were so they had such a lack of information back then that the only thing that they could rely on was location yeah yeah basically and there's there's no right or wrong when it comes to property investment necessarily obviously some strategies are potentially better than others but i guess the point is just because your strategy is right for you doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be Right. No, it, for like somebody say, else, exactly. right? Everybody has for yeah. different philosophies. Yeah. The reason I ask the question is because, well, yeah, different people say different things. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, ultimately, if you buy a house, it should go up in value. Yeah, but it's always for us like best, best value. You know, it's like anything. You want to buy the best thing you can afford to buy. Yeah. Mm. Well, at, at the moment, we're seeing a lot of activity probably just at the bottom of the market, really, and yeah. that's because yeah. that is all oh, exactly. Of investors so can that's the thing. If the you moment. can. We don't sell much like around the 500, mm. 550k mark. There is actually a lot in Christchurch at that yep. price and in areas like, you know, Phillipstown, Linwood and that sort of thing. Yep. And at the end of the day, if your options are no property or that property, definitely that property is going to give you a better capital gain than no property. Oh, mm -hmm. always. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and probably yeah. more rent too. Yeah. But if you, if you were, did have the means to purchase something that was a little bit more expensive and you're comparing Brooksfield, um, there's some things that you do differently, not just from the aesthetics. I mean, you look at the, some of these properties there, you can see solar panels, right? Mm, yeah. Solar panels is obviously not heritage colonial, but it's something yeah. you do with most of your builds, <laughs> is that right? Yeah, yeah. How um, did that come yeah, about? Yeah, it is. Well, well, that's like part of our philosophy as well, is not only like the, the design aspects in terms of what you see, but part... There's kind of two things with the sustainability movement at the moment. And one of the biggest things that you can do to build like a sustainable house is to build a house that lasts a long time mm -hmm. and that people think is worth changing and fixing and keeping. Basically, you look mm -hmm. at like, you know, you probably wouldn't say firing bricks for all the London townhouse was a great like environmental move because there'd be a lot of carbon output from that. But the thing is, is that the same house is there for two, three hundred years? Hmm. When you measure that over a long time, you actually you're actually building a really environmentally friendly house yeah. with your coal furnaces. Yeah. But um, so so um, part of it is definitely that building houses that last a long time and people love. But then the other part is that um, people uh, throw out a lot of the products in their house over time, and the house eventually even if it's a thousand years eventually will be rubbish sorry to say so that's why we use products like wool insulation wool carpet um net like more natural paint without harsh chemicals um more timber rather than mdf and all of that sort of stuff um so and solar panels is for us really a thing for our purchases we do do it on all of our homes to answer your question but um our purchasers really love it because it saves them about half the power bill. Mm -hmm. So that's like at the moment, obviously more important than ever. Yep. Um, but it is definitely, yeah, yeah, super, yep. super enticing thing that we find. And just leading on from that, would you say developing the colony, colonial style of homes is more difficult than developing, say, a traditional townhouse, the likes of which we see all over, um, not only Christchurch but Auckland, Wellington as well? Yeah, I think. I, I mean. Uh, I at love the it. beginning? Yeah, at the, the beginning, beginning it yeah. was. And like <clears throat> and um I'll tell you what is difficult is that programs that um tradespeople use or, or product suppliers use don't use 
like correct architectural detailing for what we're wanting to do. And my thing has always been that you're better to do something super basic correct mm -hmm. than something really nice bad, okay. if that makes sense. Yep. So like it is hard in the sense that like you try to get skirtings and architraves for your houses and none of them are architecturally correct. They're all just these wobbly patterns that people think are old. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So in that sense it is, but like we've built up a really good catalogue of all of our fixtures and fittings and skirtings and architraves and colours and cabinetry and stuff that is now just standard for us. So it's easy to, and it's easy because I love it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So surely through that whole phase of beginning to build these homes that are a bit different, you must have made some big mistakes along the way. Is that accurate? Um, well, what's your biggest kind of learning that you found as you took on this journey? I think like the biggest thing, the mistakes that I probably see from a building point of view are like in the houses themselves not being like detailed correctly or wrong proportions of windows, all of that sort of things, which I really notice. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't, mm -hmm. I suppose. So like it's where to draw the line eh, between like what you and a couple of other people notice and what like the rest of the world notice. Yeah, yeah. But there's definitely houses that like I'm not as proud of because of those things. But I mean they're lovely houses and the and the owners and stuff absolutely love them. It's just that they were always improving. So I always look at the old yeah, model. Yeah. I mean I'm sure the guy that made the iPhone three is probably thinking it's the worst thing in the world, eh? But at the time <laughs> it was pretty sweet. <laughs> do you do you get a kick out of driving past your developments every yeah, day? Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, big yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely, um, definitely love driving past them and like talking yeah. to the people living in them and and seeing what they're doing with the houses. I especially love it when, at the moment, we we actually sell probably to about seventy to eighty percent of owner occupiers. So what that means, which is super lovely, is that people like once they move into their house, they live in it as a home so you know they're mm -hmm. changing the gardens and adding bits and pieces mm -hmm. and growing wisteria up the veranda and all those little things which i love love seeing as well <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. do you ever drive past the development and think oh we could have done this better or could have done that better i mean that gets back to the mistake thing i'm sure there's I've been some every huge, day. huge oh actually i well. just don't drive past them <laughs> <laughs> i have streets well, look the other way yeah yeah i have, I have, str I have streets yeah yeah not this one I, I drive past that one i like it even i actually find no, fault in that one though but um it's a good looking development yeah, the yeah. reality <laughs> picture actually looks better than the render which is unusual yeah yeah the very orange bricks the orange the orange <laughs> bricks is actually totally the orange bricks is just a like a um vernacular thing like the the render was done based on using London bricks and the, the earth in London is more that colour whereas in a lot of other places around the world it's more the orange so it's just yeah. honestly there's no that's sort of something that where it's just like area yeah. specific yeah. in fact it would be wrong almost to do a London coloured brick in Christchurch because you're never going to find that colour yeah. yeah that's fair yeah. enough yeah. Yeah, okay. look I was um, showing some clients through one of your properties the other day your show home yeah. and I grew up in a a house so I've got to say that you're getting really close to being spot on I mean I think <laughs> honestly I said to the client the only thing missing from this house is the squeaky floorboards <laughs> <laughs> we could do that actually yeah we'll one, undo some screws step, for you, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no they're really beautiful homes and um, I enjoy them now Alex I think you, you wanted to answer this question it's about um, you ask it. Fire, fireplaces, all right. I'm going to do it. Oh, the chimneys. <laughs> Are they real? Come <laughs> <laughs> on. Oh, the chimneys, we, can we, we need to do Can we like do a poll? Adds a bit of charm. <laughs> we, we, uh, <laughs> we, have you um, seen that skit? You must have. But, what's uh, about the chimneys? Yeah, yeah I don't worry. We'll, nah, into that we'll, later. we'll get into that. I'll send our email. Yeah, yeah cool. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, we. Um, um, are they functional? Only for aesthetics. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they like, the thing with them is, they, I'm not sure what people, people probably think I'm a bit crazy for doing the chimneys, but you, you sort of need something, especially like, so that, that picture in front of us, it really gives you a, well, it first of all makes it really authentic, like, like that'll like seeing London without chimneys would be so, so bizarre. Oh, for like, sure. What? Yep. Where's Mary Poppins going to hang out? Mm. Um, but the, it really like gives a nice separation, as do the downpipes in that picture as well, of like between the houses. Because in town houses, it can get it's something New Zealanders aren't very used to. Because I personally don't know anyone, and I didn't myself, that grew up in a townhouse. Just in Tauranga, I don't know if there was any townhouses. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and in Christchurch, for example, there was no terraced house developments pre-1965, apart from Blackheath on Durham Street and one they knocked down to build the town hall on um, Kilmore Street. So like, even in Christchurch, relatively new concept. So you do need to give for New Zealanders. In England, people, everyone's going to live in a townhouse regardless of your budget. But um, in New Zealand, you need to give people that separation because it's, it's going to be a slow transition from standalone home on a thousand square metres to townhouse. Yep. But it will obviously happen over time slowly. Yeah. You're right, even the down pipes make a big difference. Yeah, them but that is a very sudden development in, in a sense that it is appearing straight out of the ground, which I know, like, for example, my dad, um, I, like, love English country, Georgian English country houses, but even my dad, he looks at them, and he's quite Kiwi, looks at them and he's like, a, 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 like it looks like a skyscraper's plonked in a paddock. Yeah. You know, it's not like New Zealand. We don't understand, or you do. Yeah, I do. But like, we don't understand that. So it is definitely most of our developments about having like that softer, you know, those different layers of living. So you have like the f front yard, the veranda, the house, the backyard, and like room around the house and all of that sort of thing. So look, since we've started working with you more recently, more actively, um, I've got to say, I've come across people and they were just like, I want a Brooksfield home. You've got <laughs> a following, you've got kind of a cult here. And that's which... probably one of the reasons we sort of started working with you guys to start with, right? Because yeah. oh, I would, would say always so. come to me and say, I want people, I've got people that want this stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, good. Yeah. Sell it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, I think where I see the value is that there are a lot of town ho homes and yeah. there are a lot that have got a modern look, as you were saying earlier. So it is nice to have a point of difference. Yeah. Um, in this style, and as I said clearly at the beginning, some people just it won't be for them. But yep, I yep. think you filled a really nice niche, and you're the only one doing it, as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, yeah, like I, yeah, we are. I mean, you will surely it'll catch on because, like, you know, as much as I like to think I'm an individual who have, who's thought of this idea and it's completely new, it's really not, and it is interesting that I've thought of it at the tail end of thousands of other people thinking mm. of the same mm -hmm. thing in Europe mm -hmm. and America. So it is a movement and like slowly, the thing is too is that the old homes and the way they're built um, and like their designs are much more sustainable which is a big push mm -hmm. these days, mm -hmm. all that. So, so like even down, because we had tradi in traditional homes you don't have electricity mm -hmm. which pushes for really unsustainable building practices like um, glass basically massive panes of glass that face the sun and the ability to turn on the air conditioning yep. and cool it down and obviously that court that's you know a big thing right but in traditional homes you don't have that ability so you have verandas and you have shutters and you have deep window reveals and you have all those like little things you have high studs to disperse the heat mm -hmm. so um i just think slowly more and more people will become interested in in that whether it's from a sustainable point of view, whether it's from like an architectural point of view, and it will just sort of <clears throat> become a... So right now you're Christchurch specific, but I've heard mm -hmm. rumours that that might be set to change. Is that accurate? Yeah, 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 it is. So, so um, we've actually bought a piece of land in Auckland. Oh. So we're just sort of work going through the process of, of you know, designing, figuring out, obviously dealing with a new council, dealing with all sorts of new rules. Mm -hmm. So figuring all that stuff out before we get too far. Yep. Um, and then we've actually bought one in Nelson. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. yeah, so, good. so yeah, we just had, we didn't, we, we wanted to go to Nelson and, uh, sorry, Auckland and Wellington, uh, because those are the obvious spots, right? Yep. Um, and we just had a pretty good opportunity in Nelson. And I've always loved Nelson because of the style <laughs> of homes there. Um, and our houses pretty, fit in pretty well. And they're sort of in need of, they don't have many like, you know, townhouses basically. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of people who are wanting to buy and they have to buy new because of budget or because of financing are moving way out of town into these new subdivisions. So there is quite a big market for people who want to live in town but need a new home. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And obviously the demographic probably of housing in the likes of Auckland is a little bit different to that of Christchurch. Do you think the colonial style will go well in Auckland? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I do, but just slightly different. Okay. Like in, in Christchurch, 
it kind of works because we've had some really good styles from the 19, uh, so, sorry, examples from the 1920s and 30s of like that Georgian style. It's yeah. super like symmetrical business, you know? Yeah. But in, in, in Auckland and actually Nelson, it's much more like sort of mid-colonial, For sure. like early villas, a lot of weatherboard, a lot of veranda, a lot of low houses, mm -hmm. all of that sort of stuff. So definitely want to lean into more of that. Um, up there than we potentially do down here. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. very good, cool. If you had to pick one development which you'd be most excited about, which would it be? Like that I've Sold built? and gone or up and coming, whatever oh, you like. Dead or alive. Is there yeah. one that you're like, alive. yeah, that was a masterpiece. <laughs> My next one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, oh God, what one do I love? Um, oh, every one of them, I just think we could improve that. But I probably my favorite at the moment for my favourite at the moment, actually, I think, is um, Aylesford Street, okay. which is oh, so. What that is is it's actually only two houses. We've, we've um, it's just in St Albans, Mar Maryhill, and Christchurch, and um, it's two standalone. Well, they actually joined, but two like single level cottages. Oh yeah. And they look like yep. totally. They're like almost perfect architecturally. I, you know. We've we've taken the um, sort of more or less taken inspiration or copied houses from Hobart in Tasmania, okay. like mm -hmm. the early col right. early Georgian colonial cottages. We don't really have them in New Zealand. We have one in Wellington, but just not really a time period we were building much in New Zealand. And um, yeah, Aylesford Street, three bedroom houses, double garages, nice sort of three hundred square meter sections, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. quite nice. The other one though is twenty four Bunyan Street. Okay. Brick Terrace on in Waltham mm -hmm. in Christchurch, like nine houses. You were talking about them today. Yeah, it was yeah. Yeah, with little dormers. Yeah, it looks really big sweet. windows. A little drive through to get to the car park, a muse like out the back that you drive under one of the houses. It's and right a, opposite the park as well. Yeah, right? yeah, so right it's right really quite the park. nice. And yeah. we lined up the front door of um, house number <laughs> one with the avenue of trees from the park. So you literally like walk through the park between this big avenue of plane trees. It's super London, and. Um, you're like, yeah, you walk down and you just see your front door for like 300 metres. I love how excited you are <laughs> yeah. about the tiniest exactly. details. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's clear that it's yeah. probably just a means to an end for you. Yeah, I don't yeah, 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 passionate about. Yeah. 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 Look, I'll tell you what, the one development I'm quite excited about that is up and coming is yeah. within the four abs, abs in Christchurch, yeah. quite close to the stadium, mm -hmm. um, 266 Kilmore. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think this is beautiful. Yeah, um, that uh, is super. That, that's actually a lot more um, sort of that early colonial sort of style as well, like much more New Zealand, like with the veranda and the steep roof. Yeah. And there's a room up on that roof, which would be super cute. Like, yeah, the yeah. room's up top. I've been yeah. through something similar to this, and it, it is really cute. And these have parking, don't they? They're central city with yeah, parking, yeah, yeah. and they're three bedrooms. Yep. And, yep. Uh, and 799. I mean... Yep. When you try and find a three bed central city, you're in the 900s. Yeah, yeah. This is a slightly smaller floor plan and yeah. um, when you compare it to those properties in the 900s that are three beds, but your yield, and this from an investment perspective, your yield is very similar because yeah. a three beds are three bed if it's a bit bigger or a bit smaller, particularly if you're considering short term rental. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, I think these are, these are quite a pick. Yeah, they are one of my, and actually, interestingly, that's exactly the same. Um, but house basically as the Bunyan ones I love, oh, and okay. exact same like eight houses in a row, mm -hmm. and um, room in the roof and everything, and yeah, and actually how we've sort of made that one work, being able to get it for such a good price as well is that um, <clears throat> it's actually one thing that I've like with all the compliance these days. This is one thing that I've been able to like make use of, but. That's considered a two-story house, not a three-story house, uh -huh. because that's that third story is actually an attic. And as you can see, that the roof goes across, and then <clears throat> you've got the triangle up top, but um, where the attic is. So it's actually 
we're able to like build it as a two-story house and then with an attic, which okay. makes it a lot more affordable for us to build. Yep. Because as soon as you go to a three-story, you start getting into a lot different territory with engineering and... Ah, so this is the price difference potentially yeah. where that comes potentially in. Potentially it is. But yeah. I mean, um, yeah. my grandma in the UK had an attic room <laughs> like this and that's where we would always sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's like panel walls and stuff yeah. and... I, you know, I think it's cool yeah. as. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and in terms of location, as I say, it's close to the stadium, it's close to the CBD, but it's also just a short walk from Pomeroy's, which was one of the yeah, best yeah, breakfast places in the, the city. The, the English yeah, the English Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is super close to Pomeroy's, which is like mm. really popular yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Brilliant. The, the numbers do really work on it, though, probably more so than most of the other three bedroom houses in the CBD we yeah. have. I think part of the reason probably is because. Like a lot of the three bedroom houses we have listed at the moment have garages. Um, there are probably north yeah. of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Would yeah. you put and a two hundred thousand dollar price tag on a on a garage? Probably not. No. And you're yeah. not getting much more rent for it either. So yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's probably to do with the possibly to do with the fact that it's like a three story, so it's yeah. right. suddenly really high yeah, and sure. needs different engineering and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. No, it is a really cool product for for everybody online now. Obviously, here's some some floor plans here. Now there's three, I think. Uh, one sold, couple under contract already, but there are there's still some stock left in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I know the front house is sold, which is always the usually the first or second to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, yeah, there's a few in there. Dan, you know better than I do. <laughs> yeah, there's a <laughs> Dan's uh, looking yeah. at it every day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I just can't quite afford to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> there we go. In all seriousness, seriousness though, and you get a sense sitting next to you every day which developments are passionate about, I mean, you're passionate about them all, but which developments are your favourites? And this is certainly one I hear yeah. you talk about oh, a lot, for sure. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's not just because I like the style of these homes. Yeah. It is from that investor's head as well yeah, for the yeah. price and the yeah. yields and the capital gains and the fact that you've got something a bit unique here. Mm -hmm. So after, hopefully it'll be a long-term investment for you after that 10 years or so, I feel you're going to have a bit more of a unique product to push yeah, forward, totally. and I think your capital gains might be a bit higher. Now, it's yeah. speculation on my behalf, yeah. but that's just what, what I well, feel. Well, you need to, um, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, buying a property is, is, you know, all very well and good when you're just looking at the numbers and it's on a spreadsheet. But the thing is, is that behind that spreadsheet, you need to rent that house, and ideally long term to someone who loves it. Mm. And you need to sell it in the future. Yep. You know, you're going to sell it in 10, 20, 30 years, I don't know. Mm. But you, that is the important thing about buying something that is lovable as well. Yep. It definitely needs to stack up. And like that's part of what we're always working on is making sure that our houses are super competitive mm -hmm. in terms of price and rent and area and all that stuff, um, which I feel they are. But definitely the biggest thing is making sure that like someone loves it. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, you need a, someone to fall in love with it when you go to sell it, otherwise it's going to be a nightmare for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And the nice thing about this development is it's not too large, which I think reduces the risk of competing yeah, with other yeah. investors or owners yeah. in the complex when you go to sell or even rent the property, for example. We have had mm -hmm. that issue in the past with a couple of our larger developments. Yeah. Right? yeah. I think the other thing that I really like about this, and it's maybe not... 100% confirmed, but you've applied for short time rental consent. We have, yeah. 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 And there's a really good chance that we will succeed in that. Yes, that I don't see any issue with it yeah. actually. Which yeah. now means that you've now invested in a property that you, you don't have to long term only. You are is zoned and not going to have any issues moving forward if there were to be changes within the city. You are zoned for short term rental. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got a, a rental appraisal saying you could pull 70k a year gross. For yeah, short term yeah. rental for a three bed in this location. Yeah, which definitely, yeah, yeah. And when you, I mean, I never look to, because we, we don't actually rent any of our personal houses out as short term. Yeah. So I don't really look too much at that yield, but it is pretty crazy when you yeah. like see it. Because that's like almost 10%. Obviously, there's a few more costs and stuff, but yeah, um, yeah it's pretty, pretty big. Eh? It just gives you yeah. an option as it an does. investor, yeah, it, it gives does. you choices. I yeah. think that's what I like too. And, yeah. and this is actually a good investment long term as well. Obviously, a lot of investors are going down the short term route at the moment just to compensate for high interest rates Yep. because the returns yep. can be higher. But I think sometimes the mistake people make is that they invest for the benefit of owning a short term rental rather mm, than the long term yeah. growth prospects that's, of that property, Yeah. which I, I think is really important to consider. Totally yeah. it is. I mean, that's the thing. I'm, or I'm just making an assumption that, am I right in saying you guys like 
for most people, they're buying for long-term capital gains, aren't they? It's not like you're buying for an income off the oh, property yeah, usually. Yeah, correct. Yep. Um, and I even see people, yeah, uh, yeah, anyway, there's all sorts of, d diff yeah, but I d you wouldn't want to buy as like a short-term yeah, mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, it. Yep. Yeah. You need a mixture of both, right? It's like what I was yeah, sort of saying before. You really want to get as, you want to buy the best house you can afford. And if that's the difference between being able to buy a house or not, then. Mm -hmm. yep. But it's just important to focus on the long term if you can, um, rather mm -hmm. than yep. the short yeah. term. Right? And, and yeah. talking in the long term, like there was an article recently released by Trade Me, which obviously collected a whole ton of data. And they said the property type that has increased in capital gains the most is three plus bedrooms in the central city of Christchurch. Yeah. Because there is a bit of a shortage of the yeah. three plus bedrooms and people yeah. want to be close to the city, but they want a bit more space or there's more people living in that home. Yeah. So it's I think- parking too. Yeah. There's yeah. not a lot of homes in the CBD with parking. Yeah. That is a thing too, like in, in Christchurch and most cities, you know, like the four abs have always dictated the central city mm -hmm. for the last like 150 years. Yep. And they will continue to do that forever. So like, your the more property that gets built in there, the less space that becomes the available. land becomes more scarce. So yeah, so it is. It is, and that's it's kind a nice of why. Constraint, hey, yeah, before mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, it is, and that's yeah. why it's good. Like if you, you know, if you do want the long term capital gains and buying in areas like that, and it is nice in Christchurch because you know that that is the central city. Yep. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, lovely. Just conscious of time here. Sorry, we haven't gone sorry. down too many rabbit holes though. God. I think we've done oh, all right. God, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's let's try and keep this webinar to sort of fifty minutes ish. But just last question, unless Dan, you have any any more questions. I think I know the an the answer to the first question. But what's your favourite part about being a property developer? What's your least favourite part about being a property developer? And would you recommend it as a career choice to <laughs> other people? Admittedly, there are barriers um, to entry, so it's not um, that easy. But the what is my favourite part? Would it be too broad to say my favourite part is the houses? <laughs> no, but I That's just love the. It, yeah, no, sorry. I, right. I just, like, I mean, I'm sure you've probably picked up yeah. that um, I'm just really passionate about houses and how people live mm -hmm. and making a beautiful city. Yeah. And like, that is definitely my favourite part. Mm -hmm. My least favourite part? I don't actually. My least favourite part. Um, sorry. The biggest headache. Not the biggest headache, part. okay. Um, uh, because there must be headaches. Yeah, there is kind of. I mean, you're, yeah, it's just the way you look at it, I suppose. But like, I suppose... Um, oh, you're one of those people that everything that niggles you a bit, you're just like, this is an opportunity to learn, <laughs> yeah. right? I'm trying to think of like... It's like him, that. and I have to sit next to him every day. Oh, God, yeah, you want to... Uh, <laughs> what is my least favorite that energy. <laughs> I'd say my least favourite part... Um, I mean, the hardest part yeah. is probably managing the risk, to be honest. Yeah. Because if you had... If risk wasn't an issue, right, I mean, that would be a crazy world, but if risk wasn't an issue, you would do something like, my dream is actually to build a whole town where you can build, <laughs> where you can build the houses, the shops, where people work, where people live, where people play, lay it out and design it, you know, so it's really built for humans, yeah. not cars and mm -hmm. big oil to make profits. Mm. But, <laughs> but um, you can't just go do that. Yeah. Because what are you going to go do? Spend like... $10 million on a piece of land and wonder if anyone's actually ever going to buy a house here. Well, there's and some land just outside of Rolleston. It could be called Brooksfield. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where did Brooks, where did the name come from? Brooksfield. Oh, that's actually a, um, well, yeah, that's a bit of a lot. That's a okay, long we story. Won't go down yeah, right, we, let's do another, we'll do another <laughs> On the name. Yeah, we need to have a disclosure on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually a name of a, to, if you want the answer, it's a name of a property company and um in canada i think oh, that's okay. that's fairly big and so we sort of thought it's actually called brookfield right and um we sort of thought like if we fail we can't blame the name because they didn't <laughs> well you're doing all right today right <laughs> yeah so uh yeah so that would probably be probably to answer your question um would be like the risk management stuff it's yeah. the most i mean it's not the worst part of the it, it's just the, mo the most annoying because you know <laughs> i have this vision of yeah Houses and towns and shops and people living happily, yeah. and I can't do it because risk exists. Yeah, capital right. and, and risk is a huge yeah, constraint yeah, on yeah, a lot yeah, of people's yeah, lives, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and even if even if you know, you could go do it. Would you really want to? Because what if no one did buy your stuff mm. out there? Mm. Mm. So as always, we're always we are probably extremely conservative. Were like, you nervous about managing the risk when you started? I mean, with, even with a block of say. 
five town houses. And when we started, not so not so much. Well, well like I was a lot younger for starters, which mm -hmm. I have noticed kind of like helps. Like for anyone who is young and you do have a passion, I would definitely recommend following that as young as you can yep. because the older you get the more obstacles that get in your way and the more sensible you get mm -hmm. as well Less responsibilities yeah when you're responsibilities too. and common sense because mm -hmm. you know when you're <laughs> young you kind of have no common sense and you just go like do whatever you think you should do that day um and then sorry your last question was would i recommend it as a thing to get into if you love it yep. like if there's an aspect of it that you love if you like really love building houses or designing houses or I don't know, maybe selling houses or, or something, then I'd say definitely. But I'd definitely say that in life, like in people I know who do various sorts of things, the best thing you can do is something that you love, not something that makes money. Because if you do want to make money, you'll probably make the most doing something you love anyway. Mm -hmm. For sure. But at least if you don't, you'll have a good day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you may have answered the last question I have for you, which is, what would you tell your 20-year-old self? Oh, that's right. oh God. Um, what would I tell, tell him? Uh, design, uh, um, design old looking houses now. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Sorry. It's, it's I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All One right. You'll build a town and it can be called Brooksville. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been thinking of names, but anyway. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining everyone. That's essentially the crux of the webinar, but I'm sure uh, there's been some questions posted. And if anybody has some questions, please fire them through. We'll get them up on the screen and we'll do our best, or Vinny will do his best oh, goodness. to answer them because I'm sure most of them are from for him, sorry, rather than Dan and I. Well, they might be for you. <laughs> how, many, how many developments are you? Do you have a, a target of how many developments you're releasing um, and selling down a year? Yeah, we sort of, we we sort of like part of that because you know, like it's a bit sort of grubby to be all on about numbers and goals and yeah, stuff yeah. the whole time, but we kind of do have to have them because yeah. otherwise, we just sort of like you just sort of turn up to work and do what you want on, mm -hmm. on a daily basis, which isn't actually really a great thing to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, at the moment, we're pushing to do 150 in Christchurch this yeah. year, yeah. which we'll probably almost do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I think almost doing something's always good because it yeah. means, means you've nearly yeah, got there, yeah, right? But you yeah. haven't under. Um, the the <laughs> but sort of like in terms of developments, we typically do smaller developments like Kilmore Street, which yeah. we're talking about four eight houses, is relatively large. Mm -hmm. I think on average, um, they're like six. Interestingly, I can't think of a single six unit development. It's just the average. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, most of our developments are like three, four. So because of doing 150, it's obviously a lot of developments. It ends up being like 40, 50 a year. So it's like a, a lot of them. So it's more like amount of houses in terms of our goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but but yeah. Have you got a question there for me? There we there go. go. How did you finance your first development? Um, that's a good question, actually. To be honest, I don't actually look after the finance, <laughs> but I'll be able to think of it. Um, we used... We used a bank, and we I think from memory they were just like one of the main banks. I actually think it was Kiwi Bank, and um, we put in. It was a small development of two houses, no three houses, sorry, mm -hmm. and um, we put in the land, which at the time was I think it was one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, which is quite cheap, obviously it seems now, but. Um, we, when I was saying I sold my house before from Tauranga, that's what I sold my house to do. Uh, I sold that, Ollie sold some stuff. We sort of struggled away and did that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very good. How does the cost of solar panels benefit investors? So we, yeah, that's a good question. Basically our, sorry, I'll read that out or can they see that as well? They can, they can see it. Yeah. yeah, cool. So um, the thing is with our houses is like we need to, to be able to sell them. Um, because we assume that all of our customers do research and also, as much as they love the houses and they want one, they probably need to look at other two bedroom houses or three bedroom houses in the area to make sure that they're paying fair market value. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually pay for the solar because no one really would, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So it's just one of the things we do um, and our prices are still in line with like our competitors' prices. So you'll buy you know, this house for 
800 or 799, you'll buy a competitor that's for 799, which is effectively the same amenity, so bedrooms, bathrooms, size, except ours just have solar power. Okay. So it's just, yeah. So, so it's part of your kind of company mission kind of to be sustainable. It is, yeah. okay. kind of one of our missions. So you don't pay it, but it does save the tenants, and I'm assuming that... Um, or the owners, yeah. Oh, and the owners, sorry, yeah. Uh, um, I'm yeah, assuming that that would be very enticing for a tenant if they're also paying the same amount of rent. Yep. Because again, I doubt any tenant's going to pay more for the cute colonial stuff or the yep. nice detailing or the skirtings, are they? Yep. Um, so like, but as a tenant, you'd look at that and think, well, my power bill could be 150 in this house or 70 in this house. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and everybody yeah. wants a low low power bill. Yeah, yeah of course. That was an argument in my house the other night, actually. <laughs> <laughs> was it light off? Well, I'm a real light turner offer. Oh, yeah? Actually. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I should have answered that question by saying I didn't eat avocado on toast and I turned all my lights off. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you share some insights into the challenges and opportunities you see in the current development market, regulations and our economic conditions? Economic conditions. Um, that's an interesting one. Like from a property point of view, and I know this kind of doesn't answer that directly, but pro from a property point of view, when you're looking at investing or buying property for an investment, and I mean even as an owner occupier, you're generally buying as an investment because it's actually cheaper to rent at the moment. So if your property wasn't going to go up in value, you'd be better off to rent probably for the rest of your life. Um, so you're always looking at like buying as an investment and for long term um, gains. And I think the key thing is I don't really get too hung up on like what's going on right this minute. Because honestly, you read the paper every day and there's so much going on. It's either extremely negative, extremely positive. You just don't know. The key thing is, is that you, you know, you need to buy a property and wait. Yep. And there's never actually a right time. People that get it right are generally just lucky. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I will say there are perhaps <laughs> some exceptions to yes, this. Yes, possibly. And yeah. an exception in the Christchurch market right now is the 683 million that they poured into the stadium. Yeah. And the economic growth that's gonna to bring to Christchurch, the number of people that's yeah. gonna to bring to Christchurch, and the proximity obviously of Christchurch, Central City to the rest of Christchurch really yeah. are so close. I do see that as an opportunity that presents itself in, in the market right now. Yeah, totally. And like we are finding as well with our, with our two, because we have a uh, property management company that manages some of our Brooksfield houses that people buy as investments, and we also obviously sell the houses. We're finding a huge amount of people moving, more so than ever before, like since we've been selling houses, moving to Christchurch mm. from other places. So like Auckland, Wellington, are your two biggest, obviously. And so that's like a good sign that Christchurch is really healthy, that yeah. people are, you know, sadly for Wellington, leaving Wellington to come here. Yep. Like I see that as, a, I don't know if you guys see that, but we see that as a huge trend and we also see it with our tenants. And that's just because like people moving down here and they'll be renting a house for a year while they figure out what they're up to and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just, I think there is like heaps of good stuff going on in Christchurch and there's been heaps of money spent on it since after the earthquake. Yeah. A lot of new properties, um, which is all like good, mm -hmm. good for, you know, investing. And the properties that are built, are built to a standard to withstand earthquakes. So they're actually some of the safest houses in New Zealand. Is that fair to say? Well, it would be because all the unsafe ones aren't there anymore. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. And then, yeah, exactly. The new the ones that got built. Yeah. The new ones that got built. Uh, yeah, up, way up in standards mm -hmm. in terms of yeah, in terms of what used to be built pre earthquake. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Great. Plans for Auckland expansion and which area you'll be focusing on? Yeah, so um, we're really like trying to in Auckland. Basically, how we're doing Auckland is we're just going to do it one development at a time. We and we're going to run it from. I've lived in Auckland prior to Christchurch for about five six years, so I know it relatively well. Um, but we really just want to start it small, like it's a new, fresh mm -hmm. business, yep. a little baby. Mm -hmm. And um, how we're sort of going to do that is just one development at a time. So the, and the areas we're focusing on, because we're trying to really condense our areas, because in Auckland you can kind of, it's so big, you can be like an hour and a half away from each other and still in Auckland. Um, so we're really focusing on Mount Albert would be one of my favourites. Um, Point Chev, Fringe, Mount Eden, but it's possibly too expensive. 
okay. um, and then fringe grey lin, but definitely like that. Um, sorry, uh, west sort of southwest of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. all of that that sort of area in there, and we'll see. Basically, we'll see how that goes and sort of start to yep. do it. But like in Auckland those areas that I mentioned are basically a city in themselves like there's a huge amount of people living in there whereas if you start going sort of like east west north south you're kind of you're everywhere yep. yeah and you kind of don't you really for us because it's new and because the property values and the the build costs and all of that stuff is new as well um, it's really important that we like learn a market extremely well because I can kind of drive it down a street in Christchurch and tell you how much property's worth but in Auckland, I, could, I just wouldn't be able to do that. Yep. So, yep. yeah, it's kind of like starting all over again. So it is key for us to start really yep. small. At least you're not starting all over again with the house itself. You do that really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> was, that's the thing too for us is that in Auckland, we know what works. Like, for example, our, our, our most popular house is a two-bedroom with a study upstairs and a bathroom upstairs and an open plan and a toilet downstairs. Mm -hmm. That's how, with a garage. That's our single garage. That's our most popular house to date that we've ever done. And we've done, and they look, honestly, we've been doing them for probably four or five years, and they look, the old ones and the new ones, you wouldn't even think they're the same house. Yeah. So you can do all sorts of stuff to change them on the outside, but on the inside, that's what works. So like, that's what we want to bring to Auckland because we know it already is popular. We want to really limit our... Um, Limit our risk basically yep. by not trying to do everything new. The only thing we want to do new is Auckland. Yep. Yep. You know, not the house, not the style, not, yeah, if that sort of well, makes sense. Well, we're really excited to yeah. get that information <laughs> as it's released at the property yeah, factory and, and yeah, yeah. help our buyers up in Auckland yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for a person wanting to start in property development and or investing, what are some key factors I should look at? Um, well, I mean, pro the the thing the thing that really you need to start in property investment is uh, money, usually a little bit, because you need to be able to, at the very least, pay for a deposit on a site, pay for planning, pay council fees, and all of that sort of stuff. And it, it can be a relatively big figure to do that. Um, and so if you go and sort of rewind from there a little bit to get that money, usually a lot of people start with investing in a property mm -hmm. and then making some money on it and, and selling it. It's exactly what we did and I know a lot of other developers or um, investors, like large investors, that's how they did it. You start very small and then you slowly grow over time. So like that would be the key to, be, to get into development, but into investing, I mean, I think the thing is, at the end of the day, is be the first, you've got to take it like one step at a time, right? Um, because you can't just like wake up out of bed one day having never done anything in property and just start building 500 houses. Yeah. Like, no. it's like very gradual. Yeah. It's like everything in life, yeah. And um, I think the first thing is to be buying a property would generally be the best thing to do. And sort of going back to what we were talking about before, buying the best property that you can afford to buy. And you know, that, that is many different things to many people. Um, but yeah, that would kind of be my answer to that. Is like, development is just a, I suppose, development is a faster, bigger, like a development business is a faster, bigger version of buying a single house waiting for 10 years and selling it. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's just doing that, but way more condensed and way more often. Okay. Yeah. That's a good answer. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. No, it is a good answer. <laughs> Don't say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a thumbs down, did I? No. No, that's no. just the next question coming up. It's pointing oh, okay. towards it. It's weird. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, cool. Brilliant. No more questions? Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you, everybody, for coming along. It was a pleasure to have not only the audience here, but you, Vinny, thanks for coming along. Yeah, and, uh, it's been great. Great to have the new co-host tonight, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank mm -hmm. you. It was really lovely being here. And thank yeah. you for no, it was the good. questions. It was insightful and super interesting yeah. and hopefully it was engaging for everybody on. So thank you, everybody. We'll see you next month uh, for an exciting new topic. Catch you then. Thanks for joining. Bye. See ya.